guys have access to Wi Fi? Oh, simple web application using Python or more specifically Flux. So before we get started, you can access the uh, workshop files from the my GitHub and if you want to look at the slides, you can go to this tiny URL. Uh, it's good to download the workshop files because some of them, we might not have time to cover everything. So. Say today is just a very short overview of what class and web applications are and most of it will be 
hands on. First, we will make a Hello World program. Then, we will learn how to handle data, receive from forms, and display and searching those data. If we have time, we will learn how to post it online through Python Anywhere. And hopefully, if you would like to do uh, a to do app after this workshop. So, what is Flask? Flask is a web framework. It provides you with tools, libraries, and technologies that allow you to build a web application. What's the difference between web applications and websites? Web applications are interactive while websites are static. Web applications can take users' input and dynamically change the web pages. It's a two-way interaction where data is sent from viewer to server and server to viewer. This is a simple overview of how web applications work. So Flask will mostly be new, uh, working a lot uh, on back end. Flask will send HTML or CSS to the front end, where the users can see. And when they, when they fill out a form, right, they request the data through two different methods, either get or post, which I will cover more later. So now that we know what Flask and web applications are, let's get started. Uh, here are some requirements before we start. Uh, do you guys have Python already installed on your laptop? Python. Uh, how about Visual Studio Code? Uh, if we are doing the using Visual Studio Code, we won't really need but, uh, Notepad++, plus plus, but if we can't get that,
installed trust in Sony, installed them at the bottom of the bank of the
Depending on what version it is.
やんとりあえずボスを後ろでは作りください。で、昨日で左の足さんがいる。あ。On your desktop, you can create a new folder. And you can name it say plus workshop. And inside this folder, you want to open Visual Studio Code. Start off with a simple hello world well, web application to get familiar with Flask, HTML, and a little bit of CSS. So, inside the Flask folder, you can create a hello world folder, and inside that folder, you can start off with app.py. This will be your driver file for the uh, web application. So to get started, what we do from class, import the following functions. From class, import capitalize plus, render template. After that, you want to create the application. So we do app equal to plus the score and score the score. So it must be called app. No, you can name it anything. You oh. can name it main.py application, but it's simple. It's simpler because you want to know that this is the main uh, file that creates the web application. So what this line does is basically tells the says that this is uh, this will be a your application file. So next thing you want to do is uh, get the app to search for this route at the end of your URL which is this should be the default one uh, so it will be your home page so define index and when it finds it it will run this function index that returns hello
run this application, you will check if if new go equals to main app dot run. Start the web app. You will go to terminal and click new terminal and navigate to your hello world folder by doing cd hello world. That's it. Once you're inside, you will want to run the app.py file, so Python app.py. You should start the web application in locals. So if you click it, it should display a lower at the top. Capital S and we 
see the asset effect. Then after that, you might want to restart your terminal and rerun it. Rerun it install. return a simple string so it's not you can't really do much so what you want to do is most of the time you want to you want your web application to return a html file and to do that you will change the return hello world to return render template and your in, uh, html file which we will create in a bit so let's call it index.html Once you have added that inside your hello world, we also need uh, another folder for you to store all your HTML files. So we have to name it templates because that's the default value. If you want to change your this folder that stores the HTML, you can add in, you can specify in the class, but for simplicity's sake, we won't do that. Uh, make sure it's templates with an S at the back, or else it will not work. Inside the templates folder, we'll create a uh, HTML file, HT index for HTML. And we can start creating our HTML page. So, first thing is tell the computer that this is a HTML file. Then the usual HTML head body.
so once you have created the HTML file, you can restart the web application. You can Control C in your terminal and just rerun it again. Go to the website. It should return whatever's inside your HTML. So right now what our app, web application does is basically gives you a static HTML. What you want to do is pass on some variables to this HTML so that you can change depending on the user's input. So let's say we want to instead of just hello world, we want to say welcome the user. So hello, say your name. So we will put a sort of like placeholder for now with a double curly bracket and the name of your variable inside.
pass the variable to this the HTML file to in at app dot route the slash you will get name so name equal request dot cards dot get What request or ask or get basically takes uh, such as the URL for this argument name, and you get whatever name, whatever's you get the value in the URL. So if the URL is name equal to Alex, you'll get Alex inside this name variable. And once you have it inside your app.py, you have to pass the name into your HTML page. So name equal name. So the first name is what's inside your HTML. If inside your HTML, instead of name, you put it as height, for example, you can set this one as height, the first one as height. So if you restart by default there's nothing in your URL, so you'll return hello none. But if you do slash question mark name equal to Alex, you return hello Alex. You can change your name to Say this, like you saw just now, if there's nothing to name, so it just displays none. You can set a default value of let's say work. So we just add that at the back of request or ask again. So if there's no argument name name, you just give work to this field.
CSS to our web app. It basically makes it uh, nicer. Like you can set uh, boxes or make the buttons nicer, change the colors, a lot of things. But we won't dive into details for that. Uh, you can you can search online and find a lot of things about it. So inside your Hello World uh, folder, you will want another folder called Static. Inside static, you are on the styles for you to store your CSS files and create a style. Mm -hmm. Yes, because static files uh, is good. It's for storing JavaScript and uh, CSS. You can always specify. Uh, what folder these things will be inside in your app not file under flask name so and then you pass on sorry uh, the CSS file uh, now we are we want to use CSS in our web application so inside hello world create a folder called static static is for you to store your javascript and CSS so inside static, you want to create a styles folder for you to put in your uh, CSS files. CSS file. You can actually name it whatever. But, uh, since we only have one CSS file, we'll just name it style. If we have different files for different uh, pages, then we can have another name for it. So inside your know, style.css, you are, let's say you want to make the background color different. So for the Set it to pink. Then you want everything inside your body tag in your HTML to be aligned to the center. So you do text align center. You can also change the font of your uh, words. So for H1, you want it to be a serif.
so once you have created your CSS file, you want your HTML to link to that CSS file. So inside your head tag, you will add link That is working, you can restart your Python, uh, your ML pipe. And it should, your text should be aligned to the center, and your background color should have changed. receiving this data from the form. So uh, we can create a separate folder from Hello World. Uh, same thing still inside your Flask folder. So inside registration folder, same thing you want to have a pipe and from last import last it's all the same from just now so still for the app load route and if there is found define index to return the HTML for the form. So this time we call it form.
is it the same thing as what we did just now? Huh? Is it uh, a different purpose? I'm a template folder. Yeah. Inside registration, create a templates folder for your form. Please state it uh, plus this one is I can't remember how to do it. <laughs> Basically you can set it there. You can also set the static folder. No, I want to follow the framework. So the framework is called template. By default. By default is template. So you can start creating your form. So it's a usual HTML. Drop down list to select your class or class select name class. Okay. Various options, option So we will disable it. So once they click on the drop down or this select thing, uh, they cannot select class anymore. They will have to choose A, B, C, or D. And lastly, in the form, you also want a submit button. So input type. Go to submit. And value, which is what's inside your submit button, you want it to display register. So input type a very register.
so you have the form now what you want to do is when the user submits this form you want to you want it set you want to send it back to your uh, web server so form action go to slash register This time we will use the post method instead of get. So when you submit this form, you will go to this slash register. So next thing we will do is create another route that is for register. And we also have to add methods to go to post. By default, methods will be set to get. That's why earlier on we didn't have to explicitly say that methods equal to get. But since we are using post now, we have to state it. So when the form is sent to this slash registered, we will want to get the values. Uh, we want to get the values from uh, the name and class ID. So to do that, to do name equal to quest of form of get. Early on we did request the arcs of get, but that's true the get method. Because we are receiving data through the post method, we will need to use request of form or get instead, and the name of the input. So name instead plus. ID. send information from the HTML to your web server is get and post. So with get you will request or ask or get and with post you will do request or form or get. Not necessarily uh forms you can also use get but uh like you saw earlier for get method uh, it will be displayed in your URL so it will display in your browser history and other people can easily see it but post is not so people can't really see it so next you want to ensure that the user did give a name and class ID and not just an empty form so if not Give a name and class ID, we we'll want to return success.html. Uh, 
because this is a function, uh, if it reaches a return, right? Yeah, you, you will just stop there. If you want, you can do else. Return. But. Yeah, because if it doesn't trigger this, you will just skip this part and run this. Also make use of JavaScript to pop up an alert. Uh, but the Python. I don't think so. Uh, there's a folder inside the workshop uh, files that has the JavaScript part. Uh, I will go through that later. So now we just test it. So I have to create a failure or success to each channel.
right now you're saying that the whole oh.
Database are only going through. Uh, you go through uh, storing your data in uh, CSP. Uh, there's an uh, array one, but I'll explain why that is bad because not much time, we'll just skip that. So, right now, you just check if there's name and class ID and return failure or success. But you realize that the data is not actually going anywhere. So, one way to do it is create an array. Students. And then whenever the form is submitted, you will just append to this array. But the problem with that is when you restart the application, you will rerun the whole thing and reinitialize students as an empty array. So basically, you will lose all your data. So to actually store your data, you can use databases or CSV. CSV is not as secure but simpler and not as time consuming. So we'll go through that now. We'll want to also import CSV. What's the difference between from and from class, import class, and import CSV? Big module, import a small piece. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yes. Import CSV means that you just import the whole thing. So you have access to everything. But when you call, when you use it, you have to say CSV dot, let's say reader, insert reader. If you, for example, if this line, you just do import plus. You can also do the same thing, but this time you have to do plus. Plus, because this plus is part of this. Oh, I see. So if you don't need everything, just don't. Just import this tree function. Actually, they have a lot more inside class. Yeah. So, if you wanted a database feature like what they were asking, then you have to import something for database. Uh, SQL. Let's be like for So, what I mean is within the first line, yeah. in class, they might be modules for connecting to class, uh, database. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't think so because what we learn is SQLite. Okay. 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 So you want to import CSV as well. And whenever a form is submitted, you want to write to this CSV. So you a file equal to open. Name the file registrants CSV. Open it as a pen. Why? Okay. It is a pen. It is a pen. Yes. And this this part of the This uh, are the two dots here. They must they must must be located in folder. For this, no. If it's not inside your the folder, you will create one for you. Or you auto create. Okay. So you want to create it. It must be the A, must be single code, can be single code, cannot? Uh, Python doesn't differentiate in single code, though, oh, so okay. you can do that. But in some other languages, one character is usually single code. So. It's so basic. It's so basic. Okay. Okay.
kita right now macam tak perlu open bracket We want to pass it on as a Oh? Yeah Like that lah Yeah So you put in name, comma, plus ID inside the sales <laughs> Sorry but this should be after you have checked that the user have given a name and plus ID So put it under that host bar Because you want to first check that the user gave a name and plus ID before writing to the account CSV will just be created inside the registration. The Besides just storing the data, we also want to uh, view who has registered. So to do that, we'll create another route. This time we want to read from the file. So you can also do the same thing, file equal open itself. A pen you will just use a R. But there's another way that doesn't require you to close the file every time. So open. So what this does is it will open the registrations of CSV, uh, it will read whatever is inside and turn it into a list and store the list of the students. Then we will pass these students into the registrations HTML which we will create.
and the route they will be fine with open and whatever is open is uh, saved in the file yes. right and then the reader is the csv reader and what to read read the contents of file yes. okay this is the file right students we go you can actually name it first i realized something uh if we name it as registrants you will clash with this function so i just name students uh, you will turn whatever's inside the csv into a list into a list yes and then we'll pass this students variable into this registrants with the html like earlier and we'll now display if, one if we had named it rada.csv then do we still need the line students students equal list because we still need to convert to list right? uh, yeah so no matter what we still need to convert to list yes. regardless of what the name of the csv file is because you think it conflicts yes. with the name right yes hey uh, try see this i see uh, the CSV, let's say you name it as students.csv, you will still have to do this. You still have to do it, yeah. So now we want to make the registrants.html. So inside the templates, you do registrants. But before we start writing that, uh, you might realize that there's a lot of repeated code. Every time we create an HTML page, you have you require this top type HTML, HTML head, body, whatever. So we can actually just do that once in a layout of HTML and link all the other HTML pages to that to this layout of HTML using this templating engine called Jinja. It's also part of Plus. So inside layout of HTML, you want the what is usually repeated inside the other HTML. So it's the open and close. And we'll make use of Jinja to create a block for when uh, when the stuff inside the other HTML we just put it inside there. So it's curly brace percent. This time. Because you can it's have a variable that you set back. Yeah, you can have multiple of these for different. Yeah, you can have multiple, so you can insert another block, right? Let's say in the head or somewhere else. Okay. So now that we have this inside your other HTML files, instead of having all this repeated, you can have at the top curly brace percent extends layout dot html you put whatever you want to be move into the layout of the html this block body
So whatever's inside here will be brought inside this part and you will render this whole HTML page instead of just this. All the files are actually inside the workshop folder. Everything I'm explaining now is inside. It might be slightly different here and there. I have not started. Oh, yeah. I did it. I did it. Because earlier we already had this thing. So ideally, it should be all of these should have this instead of the long chunk. Title is just what it shows on the this part of your yeah. tab. So, but uh, if you want different pages to show a different title, you can actually add another block for let's say title, and inside your failure the HTML, you can have another section similar but body change to block, uh, body change to title, and whatever you want the title to be. So you want to in this case this failure. Instead of having this, change it to block. Uh, but doing this, you also need this block inside the, the other HTML. Yeah, yeah. Or else you'll be. If there's nothing here, you'll just skip this part. So we just hit it without a title. So for now, I'll just leave it back as. To start on registration, same thing you can just do the extends. So do else, which stands for unordered list. We also make an order list OL. They will just number it one, two, three, four, five. So earlier on in F.5, 
we pass on students to this registrants or HGML. So to display all the students, we will again use Jinja. So for student in students, we want to create a this item. So I have to close the form. Okay. Oh, so the future you can actually put loops inside. Yeah. You can check for length. You can do a lot of similar to Python kind of thing, like computations inside your HTML using Jinja. So this basically check uh, takes every student and create a list item of student zero, which is the name, followed by from and student one, which is the class ID. This will be start from zero, one, yeah, zero. So actually, the list will have two people, two things inside the list: right? class ID and name. Each element in the list will have name and class ID. Yes. So for student in students, you will take for each element in the students list you want to access the zero which is the first one which is the name and oh, one see. which is the class ID okay. so alternatively if you only want the first student you can do students zero and one and zero and zero so this will access the first student in students and access the name of it because we want to display everything yeah. so if everything works and we run it we shouldn't have errors so I'm saving the install Play all day. And you will see that there's also this new registrants of CSV inside your folder. Can we go back to the instance page? Uh, registrants or HTML? Yeah. This team actually the data team. Yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah. Almost separated values. Oh. It's like. So like uh, text file. Text so so we're using it as like your real text in the GL. It's not secure, but yeah. At least you can still manipulate data on on the CSV. Manipulate as it's quite possible. Changing and deleting is possible, but 
I don't I think in databases that would be much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you just need to import SQL like three and then there's another workshop on SQL like I think just now. Yeah. You can use it inside. There's a to do uh there's a to do app inside the workshop files. So uh that uses SQLite. So you can see. I want to learn until oh, SQLite. Really I'm pretty sure you can connect to your online database as well.
So uh, if you want to make it easier for the user to navigate inside success, you want to maybe link to another person or to the registrants. So you'll do a href. So this basically creates a link which brings you to registrants slash registrants. Checks whether this app of Pfizer is the main file that starts the web application. So in bigger projects, there might be multiple Python files. So and if you run that, you don't want it to start up something else. So on the web server, you must see uh, if 
index file is actually f dot d y. It doesn't have to be named f dot p y. It can be named anything. To the yeah, yeah, to the so that 5000 is actually you're running a small web server inside yes. until you press command C, then it yeah, dies. Stop it, yes. Yeah, so it's a web server, right? So, in a when you're publishing this for the world, not just here, right? That means that web server must also cater for this, right? How do you run this on a web server? How do you publish, publish it in the cloud? That means you have to, right now it's local, but you want to host it, right? <coughs> there are cloud services that can help you host the web application. Like there's Amazon Web Services. Later I'll go through uh, Python anywhere. That's why Python is cool. So, so you go in and Python anywhere. Yeah. Source one. No, it's free. So it's a free server. It's not free. It's free. Yeah, uh, I think so. Or yeah, maybe right. it's just the. Okay, okay. Website. Ah, yes. Okay, so earlier you said that uh, you want to pop up for when. The uh, user didn't fill in like a name or uh, yeah, class ID. So we can actually make use of JavaScript inside the HTML or inside the JavaScript. Element element. Element. Hmm? ID element. You must say ID and element inside the element. No, for what for? For which field they trigger them to the element. So if it's not recommended to have your JavaScript inside your HTML, it's Actually, better to put it inside uh, the, part the, the static and scripts and your JavaScript files. But since it's just quite short, you only have like it's just doing one thing. Uh, you just put it in the HTML file. So, what this does is when the user submits the form, you will carry out this function. If not input or value, meaning that if this input is empty or there's no value, it will pop out with you must provide a name. And it will do the same thing for the select. So we but if you have multiple input and multiple select this one is too helpful. Yeah, that means right now you only have one select and one input. Oh. Uh, so if you have multiple, then you can't use input and select as well. You as can as well. select by ID. ID, yeah. yeah. ID. Select by ID, ID select by way. class, select by name. Okay. I think you can also select by name. Class also. Class also. Or, yeah. or even name, like input name. Yeah. But so this one only works only if you have only one input type. Yes. Okay, one dot. Get element by ID. 
Okay, let me find you. Yeah. Okay, not JavaScript. Yeah, the only one is that word, the dollar sign. Geocoding. Yeah. Actually, not very used to JavaScript. Okay. So. My God. Yeah. So, this app block pie is the one that's running the, the process of all the static data. The main engine that's running. Yeah, app block pie is. The one that's running the process, that means if you do this, then I just an event trigger at the top. It's the back end. It's back end. So this is the oh my app of uh, controls app the app logic. Logic la, yeah. logic. Then there's the HTML oh. files, CSS files, okay. and then you will take from that and send it to show the user. If you have a name and you click register, this thing will pop up. Pop up. The past but the issue with this is most web browsers you can actually disable your JavaScript. So it's not a good way to perform validation. So most of the time in your app.py you will have like the if not name or if not name. So what you're saying is not depend on the Java, it should be on the actual code itself. Yeah. JavaScript just makes it simpler for the user, so you won't get redirected to that page, and then they have to go back and fill it out. Okay. JavaScript is also faster because it's run on the user's laptop, so you, the data doesn't actually get sent to the server. The server process it and send it back. So you just run it there. So in other words, you should have go yeah, and for people who disable JavaScript, the server will take over. Yeah. So moving on from what we'll go to displaying and searching of data. So this one you actually need the workshop files uh, inside. Uh, inside the workshop files, there's this. Words folder and inside words, there's this large file. You'll need that later. So, uh, for that, create a new folder name it words as well. And we'll move this large file into words. So, what large is is it's a very, very, very long text of. Words. So there's 140,000 words there. So what we want to do is sort of search from this large file and only display certain ones that start to do something. So inside your words folder, you create the same thing, app of pi, and that's the same thing as what we did earlier. Same thing as before, the bot of class, create a web app, search for this route, and return render, and return the text on HTML. So, so. 
Because this time we'll only be using one or two HTML files. I won't be using the layouts, the Jinja layout.html thing. We'll just do the HTML. You need to put the uh, HTMLs in that one folder. It doesn't have to be templates, but de by default, class sets it as templates. So when you run the function render template, it will automatically search for the folder called templates. We can explicitly set, say which folder we'll be putting our HTML here. I don't remember how to do it. Inside statics, you split it into script style for JavaScript and style for CSS. So, JavaScript is called JavaScript or JS? Yes. The file, name, the file extension is JS, but the folder name is called scripts. Scripts, scripts. Script. So, so, static scripts, and inside the static is script and styles. Images. Images is also inside static. Yeah. Do they call it do we need a folder called images? I think so. Okay. But when you access images, I think you have to explicitly state a lot because we are using HTML to access the image. So so we can put whatever we want to call it. Uh, is that what you're saying yes. right there? Recommended me. Recommended name, I'm not sure. Most of the time I see as um, images, images inside static. So, inside static, recommended three uh, style, uh, script, and images. Yes. So, back to the Search index. So, what a body. This time we want a form, but a fiction that goes to slash search. But instead of post, we don't mind it to be inside of the URL, so we'll just use get. You want to put text in the So these two are similar to what we did just now. The first one is a text box for people to enter in, and the second one is a submit button. Autofocus is uh, when the page first loads that this input box will be the automatically selected, and autocomplete is when your browser suggests based on your history, right? Let's say you submit a form in your name before and you automatically have that option itself, you having to type it out. But in this case, because we are searching for words, we don't want that, so we we'll just turn that off. Next, we will create the route for the search. So 
And similarly, we want to get the value that we got from the form, which name equal to Q. So Q equal to the press form of the arts dot get. Since this time it is by get instead of post, we will use arts instead of form. Uh, because this form is submitting through get, not post. So instead of request or form dot get, we'll be doing request dot arts dot get. Arguments, yes. Uh, Uh, oh. Before that, we need to extract all the words from the large folder. So we will create a words array. And we will open the large file. Okay. Yes. I thought you were someone who was writing to you. Hmm? I thought you were someone who came from class 2. So by doing this, we will read all the words in this large and put it in a ring called words. So now we have the array with all the words. We want to filter it out. That so that only the words that start with Q will be sent to search. So we can do that using using list comprehension in Python. So words starts. Pass this words into this search or HTML for it to display. Uh, do you guys understand how this line works? If not, I will. How does the follow work like that? Okay, then. Uh, explain this how this yeah. works. So what it does is first we will create a empty array filter and we'll run a for loop for each word in this words array. Uh, but Python, you can all do this <laughs> all in one line. In other languages, I don't think so. Because so. this, this is a form. Like, this oh, the word is what? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's Python. So now we got the filter, the words that start with this query. Everything is cool, right? I don't understand why you have the first word. You know, filter equal word. That first word is what? Instead, if you just for word in word, okay, all that is really clear. Why do we have the first word? So, in that filter, the append, is it for the, for the appends or the 
trying to find the logic in that sentence. The, the first one is the thing that we added inside the array. The first one is the thing? The, the word is the word that will be inside the array because it's for word in each word. Which array? Because there's already one array called words. Yes, the 100,000 names. Yeah. It's the filter array. Uh, so word for word in words. Uh, so basically, if, if uh look through the words, and then uh you will have the uh for every words that have start with a Q, then, then you it will be word. So you have to put it inside the array. You can't just uh do this. So you have to put the word okay. there first. Okay. So you will go inside the array. So now that we have the filtered array, we will now display in the our search or HTML. So similarly, we will create search HTML in our templates folder. And we'll create an unordered list. And similarly, using the Ninja for loop for word. So it's similar to what we did before, it's the for loop domain. For each word inside the filter, we'll create a list item in our unordered list with the word inside. So there are no errors. Say you wanna find words that start with that. Wow. How big is that? How many words is that? That one hundred forty thousand words. Hundred forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think all of them are words. Some of them are. Street. I don't know what they are. Zuzu, why is it Zuzu? Alex, like if you use a for loop to look through this thing, the time limitation is four n, and then if it's very big, you'll get like very slow. Is there a better way of searching for the thing? What if you put a blank for the search? You can split everything. The change is still. Alternatively, you can. Check if that's Q or not. Use for loop how fast the search. Yeah, let's use any comparison. So just now I the figures from one to three. Okay, from one to three, we have to like yeah, yeah, it's after the data processing speed about four point three point four hundred. Oh, yeah, that's one. Can you check that? Using your for loop in comparison, training data is showing nothing. If you have like the Processing like how many new shit. Yeah, it's never gonna be called the type of. Ah. No, 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 it's okay. I just, I just, I'm not straight out of that. Just curious, like, whether it makes a difference between the comprehension and. I don't think so. Maybe Python inbuilt has its own optimization for this comprehension, but. If you look at it, I think it's still O N type. 
because you have to go through the everything inside words. You can't really skip anything. Yeah, you can code out a program that, like, let's say your words are all in order. If it's no longer, it's like after, let's say your query is C. Once it reaches D, you'll just stop. stop. Yeah. So you don't actually have to go through the whole. But you have to sort first, lah. You have to sort the words first. Yeah. Alright. Uh, this is already sorted. Yeah. This is already sorted. Oh, okay. So you can actually dictionary when store like the first like for each word, right? If it's sorted, then for each letter, like the first A, you can have the oh. index in the dictionary. Then the second one, so you start directly from there. Also. Awesome. But if you're reading from a file, I don't think you can avoid it because you need to read lah. Can pre process it, but. Oh, oh, like what you say, you read from the file, you put in the array, then give the array, the list or array or whatever you call it, then you sort it, and then do the same. Means, you know, your. So, uh, the file is itself is already sorted. Oh, but file. then, like, because when you read from the file itself, like, you read line by line. So that itself will take the whole uh, entire time already. Okay. Yeah, you can't avoid reading from the file. Uh, right? yeah. Yeah. So right now, your search has to be like a form, and you click submit. Then we'll bring you the third one. So right now, when you want to search, right, you have to like, type a letter, and then it brings you to another page. Yeah. So you can actually use JavaScript to make it such that every time you press a button, the search will be refreshed. So if you go to the workshop material, inside search.html, sorry, inside index.html, then we have JavaScript at the bottom. Uh, we'll be making use of HTML. what you said earlier, uh, jQuery as well. So this slide imports from the jQuery library, which, is lo which allows you to basically change the Easily change the HTML inside based on uh, text box without actually submitting and sending it back to the server each time. So, to do that, uh, we will first need uh, to record this inside your index.html. And what this does is we will take this input, which is a text, the search box. And on key up, so every time you press and let go of key, you will run this function. Uh, you will get the uh, get the get the so data. That's the reason why you didn't want to use post, but yeah. If you use post, you yes. can't do this, right? Yes. So you will take the data from uh, slash search question mark q equal to whatever's inside your text box currently, and using that data. We put it inside this unordered list over here. So we need to make a slight change in search dot HTML. So we don't want to, we don't want them to, we don't want to put in uh, all this like this HTML. So we can just get rid of all this. So every time you press a button. It will take in all of this and put it inside here. Yes. So oh. you don't need a format the submit button.
it's a bit slow because now every time you press a button, you run the thing. Then press another time, you run the thing. And then backspace, you run again and again. Yes. When you say run again, means no need to read from the file, right? You're just reading from the array of the right? Not read from the file, but you will have to recheck yeah, whatever recheck, this. Okay, but he's rechecking the ones read from the file, right? You don't, yeah. every time you do, you don't, he's not reading again, reading again, right? Because we read from the file at the start, so when we start our program, you read and prepare everything into bits. And yeah, you will just keep doing this every time you press a button. It shouldn't be a problem if the array is a very long, but in this case it's 140,000. So. 140,000 is still quite good, right? Fast, right? If you think about it, it's quite fast, but when you create an app, right, user experience is important. So you don't want them to like press a button and then there's a delay or a lag. Yeah, it's not very nice. Yeah. So that's about it for the basics of Plus. Now I'll move on to how to post it on Python and ah, okay. So you will first have to create an account. Okay. So after you create the account, you can go to your files and then create a new directory for what you want to upload. So in this case, I already uploaded everything because it takes some time because you have to manually insert one by one. So in this case I did two. So you upload all your app.py and database and your templates and static which are templates which are all here. And then uh, one thing is it's good to copy your app.py because on Python anywhere when you first create your web app, they will override your app.py via like empty default one. So you want to copy it so you can easily just paste it again once it's created. Can you say again? What On Python Anywhere, when you create a web app uh, on the website, it will override your app.py. So if you already have an existing app.py in that folder that you want to create a web app, yeah, it will just completely delete whatever you have and change it to their default one. So one way to do it is, of course, you can create the web app first and then upload one by one and change your change the app.py accordingly. But since I already uploaded everything, I just copy whatever's inside app.py so I can just paste it over once I create it. Any uh, reason why they do that? Why you want to copy? Is there a rationale for it? I think it's the default template thing. So it's like, you know, when you create a new thing, you have like a default. There for you to edit, yeah. yeah. But then now, because you already have a directory, so when you create it, you'll like clean out that because you're using the same name as them, yeah. Then so they'll because they do it later, okay. so that's why they will like take precedence, take like you yeah. over, yeah. You override your file, oh. yeah. It's just the website settings itself, okay. But they tell you first, like, they yeah. They will tell you later, so you skip that. Select oh, class. you select the thing. Okay, you already tell them that it's class time. And Python. And this is where you have to choose your route. Lah. So earlier on, I saved it in slash two and m dot five. So it's like slash one dot two. Two slash. Uh, yeah, they want you to, uh, if this file already exists, its contents will be overwritten with a new app. So you wanna just copy it and save it somewhere else. So and you need to change a few things in your working directory. Uh, 
this make it the same one. So just how it was in 2D, so put it. Oh, this is a temporary thing, because your file is invisible or still spring on. You also have to explicitly state where your static files are. So, slash home, slash your username, slash do, and slash static. This is for the, uh, your CSS images and JavaScript. Uh, and if you want to force HTTPS, you can do that. So, once you're done configuring, you can go back to your App or file. As you can see, uh, they will oh, clean it out and then come and step. So you can just paste it over, save. So you don't have a FTP access, right? Everything is through the browser. You copy text, paste, paste, paste for every file. Oh, no, no. There's a. Uh, you can upload your files, but oh, then. Okay. I don't think you can upload. Folders, so you have to. One it's time quite slow. Yeah, it's one at a time. Okay. But it's just this website. Yeah, see, that's the upload file. So then you wanna run the your app on file. And refresh your website. Will load your web application. You can also access it from, uh, let's say, your phone. It, it's not only uh, locally. So you, you go to the same URL. If you want to try, uh, you can go ahead and download. If you want to try, it also works. It's not only local. It's not paying to domain name Python anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's just the <laughs> you are you pay then you will pay to because your name.com. Uh I I think there's an option when you create a web app. Sorry. Yeah, I think you can add domain. Yeah, but then it's a bit it's a bit troublesome and then like because you have to because now it's they are hosting this on Python yeah, anyway. Yeah. So it's like you change domain. I'm not sure uh, because I never bought a domain, but then it's like I think you have to do some stuff to the Python anyway. Yeah. Because now currently they are using a subdomain of this yeah. Python anyway. So it's a subdomain. Yeah. So by now I'll give you a Python address and I just need to pay. Yeah, I think so I'll just have I'll just retain my my own domain. My own domain is not Earlier when we created it, there was the option like right? So you, uh, the domain name will be your name dot Python anywhere. If you would like to change it, you will need to yeah, pay the cost. But I'm not sure how much you can customize the domain because I, yeah, we have to say we've never tried it, we've never bought. If you want to. This sign in is because you created the sign in, lah. Yeah. Not on the Python anywhere. You can search how to do uh, Google login using Plus, uh, Google Plus. Go on application, I think. Oh, two. Oh, two. Yeah, there's step by step explanation on how you can do so. Yeah. You want to practice more on uh, class? I think it's good to create a to do app. You don't have to create login or databases, you can just store them in CSV. But it's, the to do app is good because you, are, you have to. This your form, like inserting, forcing, 
something. Then you will add that, and then you can also delete. So that wraps up my presentation for class. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. If you have any more questions, you can tweet me or send me an email. I have one question now. Do you get this in a desktop? Very nice desktop. Oh. This one? Yeah. Uh, there's this thing called Rain Meter Online. So, that you can customize. Rain Meter. Rain Meter. Yeah.